Good evening, everyone. I'm Brent Bailey. I'm the Executive Director of the West Virginia Land Trust. And if you've been joining our special places celebration week, you maybe know that last Friday night we announced the acquisition, very recent, of the Jenkinsburg site in Preston County, which is a really key, important site for recreation purposes. And tonight, to explain that a little bit more and understand what the Jenkinsburg site can really mean, we're joined by Charlie Walbridge. Charlie is a longtime paddler on the Cheat. Uh, he has lived in Preston County. He's a board member of the Friends of the Cheat, the watershed association with which the West Virginia Land Trust will be cooperating in the management and the maintenance of this Jenkinsburg site. And we're really glad that Charlie can join us this evening just to talk about the history of the Jenkinsburg site and what the conservation of it now means for the future. So Charlie Walbridge, welcome. We're awful glad you're here. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad to be here and uh, of course, very glad to see the culmination of several years work with the Land Trust. Well, it, it has been a while coming, but um, we're really glad that it finally did happen. And I wonder if you could talk for just a couple minutes about the significance of this conservation, permanent acquisition of this site and how it's been managed up until now and, and why it's important going forward and how you think it, it's going to be best uh, of service to the public. Sure. Um, <clears throat> Sheet River was first run in 1954 by a group from Washington, D.C., led by John Berry. At, and at that time, and for many years after that, the property, and in fact, all of the Cheat Canyon was owned, was owned by a power company, and they weren't really doing very much with it. And when I took out there in 1971, which was my first run, it was a pretty wild place. And... The thing I remember particularly was head high rhododendrons, and that the uh, you know that the road down there was very narrow and wild, and that was of course part of the fun. But uh, over the years, the use has grown. There was a huge rafting business in the uh, in the 1970s and early 80s. I was a guide there from probably 1977 to 83, and at that time we were putting. 40,000 people a year down the river, which made it as big a, uh, a as big a venue as the Valley. Now, it has declined significantly since, for, since then for various reasons, but uh, it is West Virginia's best kept whitewater secret. It is wild, it is beautiful, and Thanks to the work of Friends of the Cheat and the West Virginia Department of Natural Resources, the water quality has improved tremendously. When I first ran it in 1971, the water was sort of orange and scummy. Now it's, I'm you know I'm not I'm not sure I would go there would go there and drink a lot of it, but the but the water is clear, it smells good, and there are fish in there. There are, there are blue herons and, uh, and, and uh, hawks working it. It's, uh, it's, been, it's really come a long way. How did, how did you manage to find it? What, what, what drew you in in 1971? If it was such a hidden thing, how did you know about it? And did you know what you would encounter? Well, when I was in college, I was thinking about where I was going to go to school, or where I was going to work. And I ended up working for a year in Washington, D.C., which was a real hotbed of whitewater activity. And through a fellow I met on the river on the Potomac in Washington, I was introduced to Bob Burrell and Paul Davidson, who wrote the uh, Wild Water West Virginia, which is now the uh, canoe and kayak guide to West Virginia. And I read it cover to cover. I couldn't get enough of it. And the Cheat River was, uh, was, one, of the, was one of the features. Now, of course, the other thing, the other river that this, that this piece of property fronts on is the Big Sandy. The lower Big Sandy is one of the most popular expert runs in the east. And people come for, for many, many miles to, uh, to run this. So you've got two rivers coming together. And when I came, I came out here, I ran, the, I ran the river with Doc Davidson and Bob Burrell and... Uh, that was the first in this in the fall of of seventy one, and that was the first of a great many, great many runs. Hmm. 
Um, well, you, you mentioned that uh, DNR and Friends of the Cheat have been really active in helping to manage the site over the years, but it's also significant that uh, in a pretty unusual situation, this was privately owned by somebody who really uh, believed in the paddling community and wanted to make sure that places were secure. Uh, can you talk about that ownership prior to its acquisition just this past week? Oh, I would, I would, I would love to because I've been the person who has been working for Friends of Cheat on just the nuts and bolts of the site. And Dave Huff, who, who he and his wife were the, were the previous owners, was just, was just a wonderful partner. Um, David bought Mountain Streams and Trails Outfitters, which is the company that I worked for. And this was after the, uh, the business had declined. He attempted to bring it back. But one of the things that he got was a piece of property at the, uh, at the entrance to the canyon, just, uh, just downstream of Muddy Creek. And, and Dave, and Dave uh, really wanted to secure the Jenkinsburg site. And so when, he tr and so when Allegheny Wood Project, Products purchased it, Dave then went to them and talked to them. And it turned out that they would, wanted to have the, up, the uphill part of his property at the head of Cheat Canyon, and so they made a land swap. And, this, and uh, Dave then approached Friends of Cheat, and actually we had been talking before then because we sort of knew each other, even though we worked at different, at, for ms &T at different times, we were both part of the same community. And he knew that he was going to need some help uh, protecting it, because the area had gotten terribly abused. There was, a tremendous amount of ATV activity, and they were tearing the entire place up. And they, Dave uh, signed an agreement with American Whitewater and Friends of Cheat to uh, permit white, private private boater Whitewater access in return for doing some uh, for doing some work to make the site easier to manage. And we raised thirty thousand dollars. We, we created the upper and lower parking lot and we fenced off the areas that people didn't need to park from, uh, for, uh, from access by motorized vehicles. So we, so we started to protect the area. And it took a while because it had gotten pretty wild. Yeah. We, were, we were very fortunate to have a fellow named Matt Schaefer who was a DNR officer, put in a lot of extra time watching the place he wrote a lot of citations, and it was necessary because the first week after we finished finished cleaning up the uh, site, they some people came down. They tore the gate out. They threw it in the river, and uh, they they tore out the sign where we were announcing that this this property had been purchased and was uh, going to be accessible to the general public. It was. It was pretty wild. Now, the first thing that we did was Keith Pitzer, who was executive director of Friends of Cheat and I, we put in a $3,000 gate. This is the same kind of gate that uh, people use when they really, really, really don't want people breaking through into their property. And then the other, the other, thing, that we, <clears throat> the other thing that we did is we, uh, we, got, we got Matt working for us. And gradually the culture changed. Now, Matt said there was drug dealing down there. There was a lot of crazy activity, and it's still, it's still a little edgy, but uh, it's, it's, more, it's more manageable now. When we, and uh, Dave Huff was with us every step of the way. There were a number of times where I'd call Dave, Dave up and say, hey, Dave, they've broken through uh, they've broken through and they're beating a trail down this place where they're not supposed to be. And Dave and I would go out, and we'd string barbed wire together. And uh, sometimes I was down there pretty regularly. And in the beginning, every couple of weeks, I was hauling out a pickup truck load of trash. And Dave was doing the same thing. But now, last time I went down there to pick up trash, I had couldn't fill up a small bag. So 
it's not the culture has gone a long way and part of this was dave believing that we could do public access because a lot of people said he said he was crazy and the place was just going to get torn apart and hanging with us I think it's really unusual that um, a piece of property like this that has been so important for public access was owned by one guy. And we do run into this once in a while in the state, but it's a pretty rare occurrence. And I think that we all owe Dave a real debt of gratitude for the way that he has protected the site and promoted its use and shared so much. And I'm really glad that he was willing to sell it to the land trust and with a with condition that it will continue to be used and open to the public. I mean, that's really, you know, one of the main purposes that the land trust brings to its properties is looking to create good public access, especially for recreation. So, um, but we're mindful of the history and mindful of the role that Dave and you and DNR and a bunch of other uh, organizations and individuals have played. And I want to be sure that we're able to keep that going. Uh, one of the things I do want to ask about though, is that, I mean, uh, where, while it sounds like you know the the formal outfitter use has declined some, um, industry has somewhat shifted, maybe a little bit more to the new and the golly, and and the the cheat is a little bit harder to predict in terms of its runability. Um, I think there's also a bit of a resurgence in the area if you start to look at the greater matrix of conserved lands that's in that area. And this becomes a, this is a 13 acre parcel. It's a small parcel, but it has big impact, but it's proximity to other protected areas in, in the region certainly is a good harbinger for, uh, I think, uh, a resurgence and an expansion of recreational opportunities. Can you talk a little bit about how this site is positioned and uh, what some of the other opportunities are in the area because of conservation action on the part of other players? Oh, certainly. There's a, it has huge potential as kind of the keystone piece of property, the linchpin, because it's accessible by road. Now, the roads are really bad, and Friends of Cheat has raised money every year for the past 10 years to help keep those roads open. But uh, once you get down there, you can, if you're not paddling, you can go down the river and sit, eat lunch. Maybe have, maybe have a beer or two. There's certainly some crazy activity that has gone there over the years, and we like to tamp some of that down. But uh, there's also the Allegheny Trail goes very close to this area, and eventually we'd like to set it up so that this is a, an access point with parking for the, for the Allegheny Trail. And the trail goes all the way through the Cheat Canyon along along what it what was a uh, a logging road so it's it's not difficult hiking at all and it's it's a way for everybody to get in whether you want to stop stop by and sit by the river a little while whether you want to paddle it or whether you want to take a short walk just upstream a little ways or maybe or maybe uh, go upstream uh on the big sandy to a popular swimming hole that's known as the blue hole all of these things, this is the place where you're going to come, you're going to leave your car. And we hope that as, it, as time goes on, we'll be able to get that road improved. Yeah, that's great. You know, I mean, I think that anybody who would look at this site would really understand what its potential is as a destination for tourism and for recreation. And the biggest barrier, of course, is the road. And I think the road excludes a lot of the easy approach that might be necessary with a minivan or some family friendly vehicles. But our hope is that the land trust is that this site can become maybe a little bit less wild, but a lot more accessible so that it's used uh, for its beauty and its recreational access for all of those places that you just mentioned. I guess I should also highlight that Snake Hill Wildlife Management Area is not far away, just a little bit down the river uh, on the other side. And, uh, it just seems to me that there's a lot of rec recreation potential up here in the Preston, Mon County, North Central West Virginia area that um, is attracting lots of folks who like to paddle, hike, camp, climb, and really enjoy all the natural resources that are here. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, as Dave and I worked on the property, one of the things that we talked about was how are we going to protect it for the long term? You know, we're not getting any younger. And... <laughs> We did, 
you know, we decided that the best thing to do was to find the land trust. And of course, through Friends of Cheat, I had met Brent and some of the other folks who work for the West Virginia Land Trust, and uh, they have a good track record. They're 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 very careful in the way that an organization like Friends of Cheat isn't really set up to be. Friends of Cheat does a lot of things, but holding land for the long term is a very special job. And we think we've got some very special people ready to do it. You know, I mean, at the Land Trust, I think that we always feel like we've got, uh, there's sort of a hand in glove kind of fit with Friends of the Cheat. Um, we just really admire the way that they've been staunch advocates for clean water and for recreational opportunity. They've brought a lot to Preston County. The county has a lot to be proud of in Friends of the Chief through its long history with uh, Dave Bassage and Keith Pitzer and, uh, and Amanda. And, and I, think that, uh, I think that there's a lot of strength there. And I guess I'd really like to hear from you. I mean, as an executive director of a nonprofit, I'm really grateful to my board of directors. It's a board of directors that sets the tone, provides the guidance and really looks forward and, and is responsible for the financial health of an organization over the long term. Maybe you could just talk a little bit about Friends of the Cheat. I'd love for you to brag on them a little bit if you can, because I think they are going to be a great partner for us here. Well, I, I absolutely agree. Friends of the Cheat was started in 1992 when there was a huge mine blowout on Muddy Creek, and it released a tremendous amount of dirty water down the Cheat Canyon. And it left a five foot wide bathtub, orange bathtub ring all the way down to Cheat Lake and actually into Cheat Lake itself. It virtually wiped out a large part of the Cheat Lake fishery. And, you know, Preston County is a hard scrabble mining area. And, uh, and, and people, you know, on the one hand, they, they were aware of the, of the damage, but they didn't think really we could afford to do anything about it. But a group of guys met um, they got around the table, they talked about trying to do something, they put a jar in the middle of the table and everybody put some money into it, and they created Friends of the Cheat. And Friends of the Cheat is unusual in, in as conservation organization, is we're a community organization. We work with the people who are there. We work, we've worked with logging companies and coal companies just as, just as much as we work with uh, outdoor clubs and uh, and conservation groups, and we're interested in improving things for the for the people who live there, not creating something that is that is, that is, that is pure but not practical. Mm -hmm. And friends of cheat really created the idea of bringing of bringing state and federal money together. Now, they, the DNR has done some huge projects, 10, 20 million dollar projects, but a lot can be done with projects in the three, in the three to five hundred thousand dollar range. And there is money lying around. You just have to know how to get it. And what we did is we matched loose state money and loose federal money and put it to work. And that's, and that's been a big part of the cleanup. A lot of Friends of Cheats membership is in the whitewater paddling community. And when I got on the board, gosh, 20 years ago, that's scary. But uh, when I got on the board, one of the things I wanted to do was to work <clears throat> on securing river access. And Keith Pitzer and I worked together on both this Jenkinsburg project and, and with the uh, pur purchase of, ac of access property in Rockville. Because we were absolute, absolutely determined to uh, keep the, to keep this going, and of course it's grown. They threw a festival. The money from the festival allowed them to hire their first executive director, and Dave Bassage created the River of Promise, which gets a group of business people and government people and friends of the cheat and conservationists. Four times a year, they come together and talk about the cheat. And while there is money available to fix to fix uh, water quality problems, there's never enough. Mm -hmm. And so the most success, you know, what you have to do is you have to promote your area. And we, Friends of Cheat, over the years has done a tremendous job promoting the area. We were also 
a key partner in the acquisition of the uh, of the Cheat Canyon Wildlife Management Area. We were part of the attempt 10 years earlier to, pur to purchase when the state tried to purchase the canyon. And so this is something we've been working on for a long time. Yeah. We have managed the, uh, the Jenkinsburg area since 2006. So we know what we're doing and we're ready to keep doing it. Yeah, well, and I've heard Amanda Pitzer, the executive director also, um, speak really eloquently about the importance of recreation even more broadly and not just about the river but about the uh, trails network, uh, the trails authority that's being uh, explored and a trail network that will be developed for North Central West Virginia and this is really groundbreaking. I mean she shows really great leadership and I think that the board itself has, has a great vision for what recreation should be. Amanda's been a terrific leader. You know Keith Pitzer was a fine was a fine leader, but Amanda has taken it to the next level. Yeah, yeah. I guess that um, just as as we sort of wind this down, I'd like you to talk a little bit about what you think might be the good a good future for the site, and and frankly about how you think folks need to get on board in order to support it, because um, you know private sector conservation, which is what is done by watershed associations like Friends of the Cheat, by the West Virginia Land Trust, by a lot of other organizations around the state, um, really rely on individual contributions and the contributions of businesses and corporations in order to make their work a success. You can't sort of sit around and wait for public funds to always become available to make something happen. You need to be a catalyst as part of the nonprofit sector in order to generate money and get ideas going and build partnerships and then begin to uh, accumulate different sources of funding that can come together. So who would you think that should be uh, contacted and who would you hope would be uh, participants in finan finding financial support for this site so that it can be properly uh, maintained, managed, developed, and made more accessible and safe for the general public? Well, certainly the whitewater community has been there and we will be there. We know that there is a lot of use of, this, of the area by, by people who went to, to WVU. And I think it's important, important to reach out to that community because I talk, I, I talk to a lot of West Virginia University alumni over the years and they remember this place. They went out there and, uh, and they, sp they, spent some, they spent some time there. You know, certainly, tra certainly trail users are going, are going to be important. Um, there are all kinds of things being talked about. We'll see what actually happens. But if a tenth of what's being talked about happens, it's going, it's going to be very exciting. And recreational opportunities draw people to an area like this. And I, and I hope that we'll be able to reach out to the local community. Um, Preston County is not wealthy, but there's certainly a lot of people who use the site. And there are a lot of people who who appreciate what we've done. I remember one afternoon I was picking up trash and I talked to this gentleman. He was there with his son. And he says, well, you know, we can't drive right down to the river anymore. And I'm sort of sorry about that. But, you know, I brought my eight-year-old son here. And I never would have done that before you folks fixed the place up. Yeah. yeah that's and that's it. We want to make it accessible. And as we make it accessible, we'll be reaching out to these people. That's great, fair warning. I mean, I hope that folks who are watching this and who might see it in the future over social media uh, will also realize that we're all part of this, in this together, the more you raise, the more you can do. And uh, I hope that these key groups that love the place, have visited it in the past or continue to use it in the future, will reach into their pockets and uh, come out and support it. Uh, we are starting, we're going to be starting a campaign for fundraising for the Jenkinsburg site in order to secure its access and make it into the things that we've talked about this evening. Uh, and that's possible to do through our website, wvlandtrust.org slash donate. It's pretty easy to reach. Uh, Charlie Walbridge, I want to thank you for spending some time with us this evening. I think the whole Jenkinsburg opportunity and what it means for the whitewater community and recreation in North Central West Virginia is spectacular. And you've been a real catalyst for a lot of that happening. So thanks for joining us and thanks for all that you have done in the past to bring us to this point. It's a pleasure to be here. Pleasure working with you and I look to working with you more. You bet. All right. Take care. Good night. Good night.